today I've got a pretty nice traditional Japanese geometry problem for, for you guys. So this is based on a problem that was originally proposed by a 15-year-old Japanese student named Batsui Mitsunao, and that was from 1812. So I think that's pretty cool in the first place that this problem was proposed by a 15-year-old in 1812. That was quite a long time ago. Okay, so here's the setup. We've got a large circle with radius one, and then inside that large circle, we've got a stack of small circles. And I'll say that those small circles have radius little r. And what we have are n rows of small circles stacked. So here I have the example when, where n is equal to four. So notice I've got a first row of small circles, second, third, fourth, and they're stacked in this triangular shape. And our goal is to find r in terms of n. So the first thing that we want to do is introduce an equilateral triangle into this figure. And that equilateral triangle will have vertices at the center of these, maybe we'll call them corner circles. So those are the circles that actually intersect with the larger circle. So I need an equilateral triangle with these three vertices. So let's maybe draw that in here like that. Okay, nice. So now we wanna measure the side length of this equilateral triangle two different ways. So the first way that we're gonna do it is just by counting the number of radii of circles that it goes through. So in our case, notice that we go through one radius of a circle from the vertex to this intersection point, and then we go through two radii here, two radii here, and then another one radii. But we can maybe generalize that and see that the outside two circles are only gonna contribute one radii, but the inside circles are gonna contribute two radii. But now how many inside circles are there? Well, there will be two less than the total number of circles. Again, assuming that we have n total rows, but assuming we have n total rows means that our last row has n circles in it. Okay, so let's maybe put that together. So we have n minus two times two r. So that would be all of the radii that this goes through for the inner circles and then we'll have plus r plus r. So that would be like our first circle and our last circle like that. And then this is equal to the side length of this equilateral triangle, which we have in orange. So I'll just write that as s. So now let's see if we can simplify this and we can pretty easily. Notice r plus r is two r. So in fact, we have n minus two times two r and then one times two r. So that's gonna add up to 2r times n minus 1. So that's our first expression for the side length of this orange equilateral triangle. And in order to get another expression, we will have to include another circle into this picture. So let's get that on the board. Okay, so the new circle that we're interested in is actually the circumcircle of our orange equilateral triangle. It's pretty easy to measure the radius of this circumcircle, and that's because it has to be equal to one minus the radius of one of these little yellow circles. Because notice, it goes through these three points that are all one unit away from the circle like that is exterior to it. Okay, so let's maybe draw that into this picture. So the center of the circle is gonna occur right here. So that means this hypotenuse of the triangle which I'm forming like this has length one minus r. Furthermore, we know that this has side length s over two, given that that's gonna be half the side length of this orange equilateral triangle. And then finally, we know this angle right here is 30 degrees. So that means we can set up a trigonometry problem that will help us solve for S in terms of R. So let's maybe go ahead and do that real quick and see what we get. Notice that now we will have the cosine of 30 degrees equal to S over two over one over R as cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. But then on the other hand, we know that the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the square root of three over two. So now putting this all together, 
we can see that we have the square root of three equals s over one minus r. Meaning that we can easily solve that for s. We have s equals the square root of three times one minus r. So what have we done? We have just measured this side length of our orange equilateral triangle two different ways. But that's gonna allow us to set up an equation where we can solve for r in terms of n, which is our goal. So let's maybe write that equation down. We have two r times n minus one equals the square root of three times one minus r. So probably we'd like to expand all of this out. Then after expanding this out, we can rearrange it so we get the r's by themselves. So here we'll have two r n minus two r equals the square root of three minus the square root of three times r. So we'll probably move this over to the other side of the equation as that's the other term with an r in it. So that gives us two r times n minus two r plus the square root of three times r equals the square root of three. Next, we can factor an r out of this left-hand side. That leaves us with r times the quantity two n minus two plus the square root of three equals the square root of three. But that gives us our goal, which will be r in terms of n. Notice that r will be equal to the square root of three over two n minus two plus the square root of three. So that's maybe the goal that I have written on the board, but I wanna maybe push this forward one more step just to see like an interesting observation that we can get out of this. So on the last board, we determined that the radius of our little circle in terms of the number of rows of little circles we have is given by r equals root three over two n minus two plus root three. So I wanna notice that it's pretty clear to see that as n goes to infinity, then r will go to zero because that denominator is getting larger and larger and larger. But that makes sense because we're forcing more circles inside of this circle of fixed radius one. So that radius obviously has to go to zero. But I think maybe something interesting to look at would be the area of all of these circles in the limiting case. In other words, as n goes to infinity. So I wanna recall first, that there are going to be n times n plus one over two total small circles. And why is that? Well, that's because we have like a triangular number here. Notice we have one plus two plus three plus four all the way down to n. Okay, so that means that the area total, in other words, the area of all of the small circles is given by, well, it's gonna be pi times the radius squared times the number of circles. So let's maybe write this as the number of circles first and then pi times r squared. So that's gonna give us three pi over two n minus two plus root three quantity squared. Just to reiterate what we're calculating here is the area that I'm shading of all of these circles in yellow. So I won't shade them all, but it's gonna be the area of all of those circles in terms of n. But now let's find the limit of that. So the limit as n goes to infinity of area total equals the limit as n goes to infinity of, well, we can just keep the leading terms in the numerator and the denominator. So in the numerator, we have three pi times n squared is like our leading term. We also have a three pi times n, but the quadratic term will win out in the limit. And then in the denominator, we'll have two times two n squared. So that's gonna be eight n squared plus lower order terms. So I'll just put plus dot 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 for lower order terms. And then, again, taking the limit, we'll see that the higher order terms are all that really matters, giving us three pi over eight as the value for the limit of the area of this entire stack of circles as n goes to infinity. So next up, I wanna compare that to the area of the equilateral triangle, which is inscribed inside of this white circle. So let me maybe draw that in red. So we've got this equilateral triangle in this white circle. And in my mind, this equilateral triangle seems to be the limit of this orange equilateral triangle and also seems like it would have the same area 
as the sum of the areas of all of these circles. But you can do a pretty standard calculation for the area of an inscribed equilateral triangle inside of a circle to see that the area of, and I'll just write it as this red equilateral triangle, is in fact equal to three times the square root of three over four. Three times the square root of three over four is clearly not equal to three pi over eight. Well, this number is algebraic, but that number is not algebraic, so we know that they cannot be equal. And in fact, they differ by about 10%. So my question for you to maybe post in the comments is where did that area go as we kept adding more and more circles? Why don't we fill up the entire area of this red equilateral triangle? And that's a good place to stop.